A couple of weeks ago, there was a competition here at Harrow Hall for International Women's Day. I noticed on Harrow Hall's Instagram that the setters were all women, and I saw that Immy was one of them, and I've grabbed her here today. Is it normal for there to be all women setters? It's very uncommon. Currently, uh, I'm the only setter who's qualified to lead sets uh, for LCC, for the Harrow Wall Vox Walls. We have a whole team, including some other women, but currently I'm the only person who can be the chief on the day. So therefore, unless it's me leading, there will always be a man on the set. How long have you been climbing for? I've been climbing since I was six. Wow. And I am now 24, so wow. <laughs> quite a long time. And I started like competing uh, through my whole childhood. So I always, climbing was always like my thing. I never had anything else really. <laughs> I was very passionate about it as soon as I found it. So, yeah. and now I've made it my job. So, so love at first sight basically. Yeah. Brilliant. No, I feel the same way, just a lot later at 45. So <laughs> a little bit later. <laughs> a little bit later. <laughs> For the Women's Day, I entered with some of my friends. We're all mums, all over 45. Amazing. And one thing I did notice here actually was I didn't see any other women teams. It's interesting. I think mm. generally at comps, there tends to be more men. Yeah. Um, that's always been the case. It's getting better. Um, but when I was growing up, there were always a lot more boys in the boys categories yeah. than the girls. Now it's often a more 50-50, especially in youth comps. But uh, when I did a comp the other weekend, I looked at like the, the numbers, men mm. and women, and there was double the amount of men to women. So it was like 100 to 50, yeah. which is better. But it's not great. This is what I thought. I went to Blockfest recently and I was looking back on the numbers and there was something like 100 men to 50 women yeah. in the main category. And in the Masters category, it was worse than that. Yeah. I would like to see more women climbing uh, in competitions. I'd like to see more Masters climbing yeah. and female Masters particularly. Comps can feel quite intimidating to people. They think like, oh, I've got to be good enough to enter. Oh, what if the ball is too hard? What if there's loads of really good people? But yeah. for a local comp, honestly, I think they're accessible for any level. You just have to get rid of your expectations and be able to be like, cool, I'm just going to go. I'm going to try some really cool boulders. I'm going to meet some people. Usually they have like, you know, good, good lights, good music, and like very high quality boulders. And I think it's good to remember that like, you can take it as seriously as you want. It doesn't have to be a big thing unless you want it to be. That's exactly how I feel as well. So one of the reasons I have been competing when I am not a good climber, I'm sort of mainly climbing V2, V3s and yeah. competition levels, not really that because I get quite scared. This but one's I, so tall. <laughs> I get is. scared on this one. <laughs> but I still want to compete because I want other people to see me doing it and say, I can do better than that and I'm not going to be scared to enter. Yeah. Last year, I did a competition. Uh, it was Funkfest. Ah, nice. And I came second. In the Masters. I said second in Yay. the Masters. But I also came last. So that's OK. Aww. And it made me sad that there were only two people entering. It would be nice to see more people entering. Hopefully more this year. I know this was a mixed competition. You had to have a, at least one woman plus in every team. Yeah. But generally, when you're setting for women or women's competitions, do you set any differently? If we were setting for a comp where there was a, a women's tour of blocks and a men's tour of blocks, mm. the only difference would usually be that the level would be slightly different. Um, maybe the few top end blocks would be a little bit of a lower grade. Um, just because of the average level, um, some women are going to come and do all the boulders. Um, and sometimes we put everyone on the same tour of blocks because it's still good to see where people stack up because some women are great at a style that men don't do as well at. Generally though, if it's for just men, we tend to set the, the average height um, for like span for the boulders at about 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, so for me, that's like exactly my height, which is quite helpful. Um, but Thank for you. a women's tour box, especially when we know that um, some youth climbers are coming. So we have some incredible 14 year olds who come and will potentially win uh, comps. When we're setting for a comp where we know we have kids like that coming who are incredible athletes, we will make sure that the boulders are not span dependent. And I think good setting should be accessible for, for everyone. The most important thing is looking at the field of people we have, making sure it's a suitable level of grade, a suitable spread of difficulties and styles, and not gonna rule anyone out because of their shape or size. That's, that's most important for me. And I think if you're a good setter, you can do that. I love the accessibility in climbing, and I love particularly the accessibility in the com in competitions. So again, at Blockfest, I could see they had categories for power climbers, for masters, for children, for adults, and in all three, they had male, female, and non-binary. It's 
really good that some bigger events are able to do that. It's not always possible just because if an event wants to have prizes for every category, not everywhere can afford to have prizes for 10 different categories. You know, that's not always feasible. Climbing is still, you know, not the most, I don't know, wealthy sport. Um, but I think LCC has made a good step for, for this set. The league used to be like a men's category and a women's category. And just because of how it's formatted with two people who get sponsorship at the end, they didn't want it to be you know, an extra non-binary category just because it made it really complicated yeah. for prizes. So instead this year they've done a women plus category and an open category. So if you feel like you identify with women plus, you enter that. And if you want to enter the open, that's open for anyone of any gender. Women can enter that too if they want. Um, I think that's fantastic. But it just means that it's now accessible for anyone. Uh, it doesn't rule you yeah. out. I was reading about that. I really like that idea. Yeah. Competition settings are a little bit different to normal setting because the aim of the boulder is to split the field. So often that's move by move. We want every move to feel a little bit wobbly, a little bit insecure, a little bit like you could fall off it. Because that's the point. That's the style we've been going for because it should feel risky. I think confidence is often key mm. for boulders like this. Do you have a favorite style of block or? Um, I mean, my, my, my specialty is slabs. I yeah. love slabs. Okay. I love techie climbing. Yeah. I think if I was I like gonna that. try and set like my, my perfect boulder it would have lots of volumes lots of smearing really technical a lot about hip positioning body positioning a little bit scary i like a scary boulder i like a boulder where you have to commit to the fear factor not because it's dangerous but because it feels sketchy but i also love big shiny holds comples are my favorite because i usually get a lot of volumes to play with and a lot of big shiny holds yeah. shiny holds terrify me I know, everyone <laughs> says this, but it makes me so sad because they're so pretty. They are pretty, they are pretty. I know, you just have so, to think of them as like the wall's jewelry <laughs> and then maybe they'll feel less scary. They're like shiny, they're like the pretty bits. And colorful. <laughs> I know. Can you show me which of the boulders have you set on this wall? On so the wall? on this set, we set like four blocks each. This green one, that blue one, the purple. Quite a big like, grade range. Excellent. Uh, I think range from about sort of V2 to V6. One that I was really happy with because it's in a more accessible grade range, uh, so I've seen a lot of people enjoying it, was a, uh, an x cult boulder over here. The pink boulder with the very pretty Beaver Town holds. They are x cult holds. They are my favourites. I love x cult Shiny x cult makes my heart happy. So when I see them on a set, I always want them. Sometimes I give them to someone else, but this time I took them. Is it possible to look at a boulder and at the same time think it is beautiful and petrifying? Yeah. Fine, thanks. If it helps, most of my slabs <laughs> make even me feel like that. Yeah. We haven't just come to talk. No. We've come to climb. Yes. <sighs> Deep breath. <laughs> I'll grab my shoes. I'm excited now. On this set with me, I had two very, very strong national setters. So I had Roz Beveridge and Zoe Wood. And then I also had the two other women who are on the LCC in-house team. So that's Mads and Taylor. It was a very wholesome day. Yeah. We like started out the day with like some like feminist girl pop <laughs> anthems. We had a lot of Beyonce on. Uh, it, was, it was really nice. We were all singing. It was very different. It was really nice. It was a really nice day. And quite a different day, I imagine. Definitely a very different day. Would you say there's more female setters now than when you first started? Oh, definitely. When I first started setting, I barely ever worked with women. I, I remember the first time I worked like yeah. with a female setter and I would like not see a woman for weeks. And then I'd be like, wow, a woman. So exciting. <laughs> and I didn't get, the first time I spoke to a female head setter was over a year into my setting career. It was nice. There's now a few more female headsetters yeah. around. Um, it's still rare. This is interesting from a climbing point of view because some of the times when I do post my Instagram and I find out who set the climbs yeah. or set the blocks, they quite often are women. I think sometimes boulders that are set by women may have difficulties relying on mobility, on high feet, on crimping, on things that maybe you find more naturally suited to you. Yeah. Whereas men tend to add in things which are maybe more dynamic move, uh, a bit more of a committing move, yes. stuff that's a bit more powerful, slopers. Yeah. It, it's a generalization and it's not always the case, but it's a generalization because it, it does happen. Yeah. Um, and I think as you're starting to push grades and climbing things that you'd want to post, those styles are ones you're seeking out. Yeah. Well, the thing that I see a lot of women find the easiest is crimps. It's high feet, it's static, it's yeah. technical, yeah. it's hip mobility, 
and not all women are good at that and not all women who set like to set that a lot of the women i set with love setting powerful boulders but it's definitely what i'm good at yeah. and if i'm setting a hard boulder often that's what i'll do because yeah. it's a lot easier to test a v8 in a style i'm good at rather than like a v8 powerful paddle dyno because that's something i really struggle with perfect i particularly love setting low mid-range boulders yeah I like boulders, which I know that the most people are going to get on them. I think V3 is like the best grade. I think so. V3 I, is just the best. It's it the is. Best it's where all the technical stuff comes into it. But it's, but not, it's not like too power. It's not really hard. No. So you've set this one and you'd like me to have a go at it. Yeah. Mm. Do you want me to climb it first? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to have a look and just see if I can root read it because I didn't weirdly look at it. Ah. in the competition i had a massive fall at Blockfest, and okay. i was still feeling a week later a little bit a little bit yeah. shaky i do like the look of it in fact the shininess and the colorfulness is one of the things that attracts me to indoor bouldering indoor bouldering looks so cool it's pretty i think it's harder to find aesthetic boulders outdoors yeah. things can be aesthetic because of the movement the scenery it's, it's very yeah. different yeah there's some beautiful boulders like embrone but indoors <laughs> it's all bright and yeah. Right. So I think hand, hand, feet, feet, that's probably going to be a foot. I think I can get up to there. I'm going to want to use this, but this is out. That this is, out. is a volume for a, for a different block. So up to here. Hmm. Probably a foot here and here. I'll see what feels good at the time. Get across to that. Then right foot up. Put my hands up there stands up here and here stands up here nice gentle walk across and up <laughs> i was very sketchy about the details and a lot of that i'm just going to go for it it already feels worse than i thought it would oh that feels good it's a long way away though Ow. nice Ugh. come on Come on. Nice! Good yeah. fall. First try done. That was very different to what you thought. To what I thought. Yeah. I realised I did I did rush through my route reading. Mm -hmm. That brings me to another point of why I think more people should compete at least once. And it teaches you to route read and not just jump straight on a climb thinking, let's see what happens, come off yeah. and try again. A lot of how competitions work is attempts based, so 10 points if you flash it, 7 points if you get it second go. So every attempt can feel really crucial. Yeah. Uh, every attempt can feel like if you mess it up, you've wasted points, especially if it's on a boulder that you then do quite easily. Well, I was slightly different because I'm not setting out to win. No. But I was setting out to do the best I could. Yeah. I didn't do that here. I basically was impatient. I, it looks fun. It looks pretty. I think you're a bit impatient. And maybe, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, it feels like there's a little part of you that doesn't think you're going to do it. So you almost aren't attempting every boulder trying to get to the top. You're just like, well, I'm just going to try and see how it feels because I'm not going to do it anyway. Out of competitions, yes. Okay. In a competition, I am trying. Okay. But yeah. right now? But right now, no. <laughs> yeah. It isn't a competition. Unless you say you're going to buy me 10 chocolates. 10? If I do it my first try. Seven chocolates. If I buy oh my second. goodness. <laughs> On my route set of salary, I don't think that's going to happen. No. <laughs> Let's have another go. I've had my yeah. force break. You, you already on your first go immediately corrected what I'd thought of as, oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Going to that and going, yeah. nope. It was good to see you quickly realise that it just didn't feel right. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would have known that because it's only when I felt it, it felt wrong. The thing that for me gives it away is the amount of chalk on that. Oh, yeah. And the lack of chalk and the amount of rubber <laughs> on that. Even if people thought like, oh, I'll try that there would be so much chalk on that, but there's so little compared to everything else, which is usually a pretty good clue of, okay, people probably haven't held that, so I probably don't want to try that straight away. It's very different from anything I've ever attempted before, as in it's shinier, Excellent. I think. It's just shinier. It's definitely just That's, <laughs> It's literally just shinier. <laughs> and pink. Uh, have I got a chalky handprint on my face now? No. Do you remember what I did and what yeah. I did wrong? Damn, I do. I do have a bit of a, a bit of an advantage here in the fact that I know how it's easy to, easiest to do it oh. because I did set it. Could? <laughs> Would you like a tip? <laughs> you fell off when you uh, you went from this hold yes. into that, yes. and then you tried to bump into that. Yeah. 
if you go into the higher one first, yeah. you don't have to do that awkward bump off yeah. the slightly worse hold. Yeah. And you'll get into that a bit higher up. Okay. You can start getting over the foot and get onto that off yeah. a higher hold. It just will make it less okay. of a powerful move. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm, I'm not liking the rock over onto the heel because I'm so bad at that move at the moment. It doesn't have to be a heel. I think it's often about like personal preference and like size. I think if you're really big, sometimes having a heel on means like you can sit on it more yeah. if like the space is proportionally smaller for you yeah but if you're the right the right kind of shape for the boulder then yeah. sitting on the foot like you, you can get over the foot and like fit in the space if quite well which yeah. i think you probably will i find rocking over on a toe way easier oh. nice come on all these are very shiny yeah Come on. Oh, I haven't got the strength for this. Uh, push, push, push. Yeah, use your leg. Stand up, 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 up. I can't get over it. Uh. Good try. I didn't think I'd get stuck on that bit. I think part of why you got stuck is because before you even fully commit to standing up, you said, I don't have the strength for this. I can't stand up. I can't do that move. And you were still on the wall. It wasn't like, I can't do this, it can't do this. It was just like, I was using all my strength to stay static where I was. Sometimes yeah, staying in a static position for too long can feel really hard. And yeah. moving through that position to the next position will then feel easier. Do you want to climb it at this point? Yeah, I'll climb it. Show me how it's done. It's just elegance and using no strength. I've always been better at climbing than I am strong. Um, I grew up lead climbing, so I did a lot of learning how to be really technical and use the least strength possible because when you're lead climbing, you want to be maximizing your endurance and yeah. your strength because it's a lot of moves. Yeah. So Save your energy. Now I'm mainly boulder, but I still climb quite straight arms. There's ways to climb that boulder if you're stronger than the boulder to use a bit more bicep but you can lay back so that you don't have to use your biceps really hard yeah. you can you can use your feet you can use your hips i've got very hippie hips <laughs> so it's it's usually what i rely on yeah it's like my my superpower is Excellent. my hips um you don't need like super mobile hips for this but it definitely helps yeah if you think that getting strong was too hard get better hips that's my number one tip it's the low-hanging fruit is basically yeah. working on the bits of you that you can make better oh, yeah. quickly. The slower you move through a move and the longer you make yourself be in the transition, yeah. usually the more powerful it will feel. If you move quick, use less strength. Do the hard bit quick and then do the next bit slower. Yeah. Come on. Oh, ew. No. Uh. I think you're still a little bit low down on it. It gets a little yeah. bit better higher up and also the higher up you get you have more space to go from this to like that which is when you can take all the weight out of, out of this guy. My heart out is breath. racing. <laughs> it felt like I could not get my arm high enough. You get a little bit higher up straight away so this move you can come all the way up straight away oh. and then do that. It's, that. it's that bit. Even if you do it from here you can bump 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 and then push. See okay. how my leg comes straight? You're, yes. It's not coming over it that way. Once you're on that, oh. it's just letting your leg go. I was trying to rock over onto it. I was using my toes you to You want to stay laid back enough that. It's not a good hold when you get over that way. Let me grab a brush and brush it as well. I love brushing. Brushing is very important. And sometimes people say, oh, I only climb V2. I can't brush, that's embarrassing. It's for like <laughs> good people. But if it's at your limit, the 10% yeah. you gain from brushing is still just as applicable. Especially at V2, actually, because so many people touch these holes, they get disgusting. <laughs> right, I'm going to have, with everything in mind, one more attempt. Come on. Come on. Straight, straight, straight. Push, push, push. Yes, come on. 
and you can match him with your hands as well now. Oh, this wrist is killing me. I don't know what to do with my hands. I can't let go of this wrist. Oh, yeah. The left wrist? Y yes. All my weight's on this wrist, okay. not on this one. You said keep this straight, that if I'd done that, that would have taken the weight off this wrist. Yeah. Did I do that? No. It's a scary transition. You need to do this. <laughs> it's very simple on the ground. It's so subtle and it's so nuanced, I find. Yeah. Because it isn't just the stand. Big it's holds lean. with a lot of options and yeah. that can make it feel a bit like decision paralysis. On that thing, You've got like a whole meter of, I know. of hold. But I think just remember that what's the best bit for someone else might yeah. not feel the best for you yeah. because of different morphology. Yeah, of course. How much would this Ooh. cost? So one of these like big long things, yeah. that's probably about 300, 400 quid. Wow. And then a set of these smaller shapes, you can get them in like a, like a set of like 20. Okay. And that's probably around 300 as well. So in total, probably this would come to at least like a grand. Yeah. Um, oh, easy, easy. Plywood volumes are also yeah. super expensive. Comp holds are really. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. why I like them. Yeah. No, they feel nice. I have, right? I have expensive taste. I'm going to try and feel as many expensive holds as yes, I can exactly. on my last attempt. I know. Very nice. Come on. Last go. Give it everything. Yeah. Come on. Lay back. Get that arm straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. You got it. You just uh, got to cross the arm and come Every in. time I let go. Oh, that was so good. Did you see? You were so uh, close. I did let go. Oh, I did let go. That was it. Every time I did. I saw the moment that you were up there. Oh, that was like heartbreaking. I was like, yes, no, yes. <laughs> the journey from first go to that go was so yeah. good. That was so cool. Oh, thank you so much for coaching me through That's it. That's okay. It's especially nice coaching people on my boulders because obviously I know their secrets. Definitely. It's great fun. I think there's nothing better than having the root setter show you their comp block. And so also maybe nice to make it a bit less intimidating because yeah. you have like a, a friend holding your hand yeah. through it. I know it's like you, you, can, you can climb boulders on your own but sometimes the intimidating stuff it's nice to have someone be like you got this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.